Hey, it's me, Dr. Shiv Kumar Yadav. Today, let's discuss about enteric fever. So, the enteric fever is also said to be typhoid fever. Mm, it's a bacterial infection caused by gram-negative bacilli, Salmonella typhi. The mode of transmission is fecal-oral route. The disease is most common in India, Nepal, Indo subcontinental, Sark. That's the Pakistan, Nepal, India, Bhutan, Afghanistan, <coughs> Maldives, Sri Lanka, and South African, Saharan African, and Latin America, where socio economical status is very low. The clinical feature of enteric fever, let's discuss about the clinical feature of enteric fever. <coughs> the incubation period of enteric fever is 10 to 14 days. Onset is insidious. Prominent clinical scenario of enteric fever is fever associated with headache, associated with Abdominal abnormalities. These three clinical scenario. First, the prominent sign and the first prominent symptoms is a fever. Everybody will know about fever. How fever happen? What is the cause of fever? Fever cause. What is the cause of fever? Everybody know what is fever. The rise in temperature is said to be fever. More than 37.4 degrees Celsius. So, what is the cause of fever? There must be the factor one infection, second, inflammation, third, there must be clotting, fourth, rise or fall in temperature. In case of fever, every fever is trachycardia, but in case of Enteric fever is a bradycardia. So let's something know about what is trachycardia, what is bradycardia. <clears throat> Before we discuss trachycardia and bradycardia, we first know about what is pulse rate, what is the normal limit for pulse rate. Pulse rate, the normal definition is the pressure exerted on arterial wall is said to be pulse rate and the normal pulse rate is 60 to 100 beats per minute. When it is more than 100 beats per minute, it's said to be trachycardia. Everybody will know. And when it's less than 60 beats per minute, it's said to be bradycardia. So in case of enteric fever, we often see the fever is relative bradycardia. Many questions you may can assume uh, whether the enteric fever, uh, the pulse rate is either trachycardia or bradycardia. The simple questions may arise in many, many exams you can assume. So, typically in case of enteric fever, it's a step ladder fever first. Second, it's a relative bradycardia. The fever occurred due to salmonella typhi directly triggered to the lymphoid tissue of a small intestine, resulting a typical lesion in lymphoid cells is said to be pears patches. So where does pear species localize? Pear species localize the lymphoid cells of a small intestine. And the second prominent feature is headache. Why headache happen? Due to the salmonella typhi directly triggers to the intestine, the gastric mucosa secrete its ion and that initiate our Cerebrum. <clears throat> so headaches does occur. 
and the final the most prominent clinical scenario is abdominal abnormalities so in case of abdominal abnormality the patient may feel it's a diarrhea might be patient feel constipation might be patient feel anorexia means loss of appetite and might be patient feel nausea and vomiting Mist. other sign includes mileage joint pain and arthralgia dry shyness and itching of limb in case of enteric fever the first week what the patient feels patient feels fever associated with headache associated with abdominal abnormalities might be diarrhea might be constipation might be <clears throat> might be vomiting might be anorexia and one plus more sign is myalgia the end of first week what the patient feel rose spot on trunk and abdominal distension upper respiratory tract infection especially cough diarrhea and splenomegaly second stage complication it's a bowel bowel is either perforated or hemorrhage perforation happens intestinal clotting happens intestinal hemorrhage happens intestinal obstructions happen the anterior part is gall bladder so patient may have the problem difficulty in gall bladder either the patient may feel cholelithiasis or cholecystitis infection or inflammation in the gall, gall bladder that subsist chronic caries persist gall bladder gall bladder caries sonolo in case of sonology may we assume gall bladder wall is thickened or may we can assume <coughs> cholesterol stone a tiny particle of cholesterol stone and the spleen we may feel splenomegaly in kidney we may can see glomerular nephritis or may we can say nephritis we already know about nephritis the most prominent sign is rbc cast presents liver abnormalities <coughs> upper respiratory tract infection in case of second uh, stage complication upper respiratory tract infection might we pills bronchitis and arthralgia joint pain bone and joint pain the last stage of enteric fever is a little bit very very complicated it bleeds myocarditis and delirium means mental abnormalities and the patient goes to coma and if untreated the patient may demise means death so so how do you diagnose enteric fever or typhoid fever as doctor what the investigation do you want for from for enteric fever or typhoid fever for diagnosis we must know about the diagnostic test and the screening test so what is diagnostic test diagnostic test is a procedure performed to confirm or determine the presence of disease in an individual suspected of having a disease usually following the reports of symptom or based on medical test result so for enteric fever the diagnostic test is blood culture and it takes more than 72 hour and let's come to the screening test a screening test 
refer to a medical test or a series of tests used to detect or predict the presence of disease in at risk individual within a definite group such as a population, family or workforce. A screening test may be performed to monitor disease prevalence, manage epidemiology, aid in prevention, prevention or strictly for the statistical purpose. So in case of enteric fever, we perform BASU, BASU, BASU means B for blood culture, A for agglutination test, S for stool test and U for urine test. So the definitive diagnostic test for typhoid or enteric fever is blood culture and it takes more than 72 hours to get the report. So patient will go to see the guard. So we normal, normally perform viral test that's a agglutination test. It's a fast screening test to detect the disease. It's a very fast. So we perform normally we perform the screening test viral test which is 70% specific and later on we perform a stool test and urine test. We discuss about what is the palliative test. So in palliative test we may can see complete blood cell or full blood count. In complete blood cell we see TLC total leukocyte count it's a decrease and neutrophil might be normal or low and lymphocyte as a doctor we see it's a high so leukopenia happens and ESR might be elevated and we make and perform second test is ESR third test we make and perform CRP C reacting protein means carbohydrate reacting protein might be positive or elevated. SO titer we may can see whether the urine have some problem or upper respiratory tract infection either there is anti streptococcal antigen is present or not and may we can see in case of second stage of complication we may can see whether the patient having intestinal perforates or not, we may can perform abdominal plane x-ray to find an erect position. So what we will see in the x-ray, we may can see <coughs> there is a gas bubble present in the, we can perform ultrasonography to see, to rule out whether the patient having Gallbladder abnormality might be cholecystitis, cholelithiasis. Is the patient having a splenomegaly or not? Liver, some abnormality or not? So we may can do that. And whether the patient having kidney, something like a hydronephrosis happen? It's a real. Oh, we didn't assume a lot of patient having hydronephrosis. So we can do echo. Also, we can do why whether the patient having myocardium or not, myocarditis or not. And uric acid and RA factor also we can perform. Beside this test, there is no need of performing. May be liver enzyme is elevated or not. May you can perform whether the renal function is good or not. So, we already discussed about what is the causative organism of enteric fever mode of transmission of enteric fever, <coughs> clinical scenario of enteric fever and how you diagnose enteric fever. Now the final point we are going to discuss that how do you manage enteric fever. So my dear friend we can easily manage enteric fever. So many doctors perform only giving analgesic and giving antibiotic and the patient is not covering well. So first we will go through the clinical scenario. What is the most prominent clinical scenario? First, what is the most prominent clinical scenario we observe? 
that's a fever second headache third abdominal abnormality so treat all the causes treat all the symptoms so in case of management protocol we may can give either there is iv intravenous or orally we can feed the patient so the first aim of treatment is first reduction of pyrexia how to reduce fever so we often know, we already know everybody that how do you want to reduce pyrexia that's nsaid group of drug second ppi proton pump inhibitor you can give third <coughs> to reduce anorexia we may can give cy cyproheptadine that's a h1 blocker its side effect is anorexia covering medicine maybe we can use siphon activate practin genozam different brand came to the market and for liver and gall gallbladder if it is not for <coughs> perforated or anything happens we may can give some antibiotic coverage for gram negative bacilli and we knew that all antibiotic covers gram negative second generation fluorokinin in conol group uh, second generation cephalosporin third generation cephalosporin so what is the most common drug of choice for enteric fever second generation fluorokinol group of drug that is ciprofloxacin or fluxacin gandifloxacin moxifloxacin lampifloxacin a lot of fluxacin huh? so base choice of drug is ofloxacin and <clears throat> we may <clears throat> second extended spectrum of third generation cephalosporin we may can give cefotaxim ceftriaxone Cefixim <clears throat> and third point is microlide of group of drug we may can give azithromycin or if for 10 this 500 mg or depending on uh, what's the weight of patient increase in the resistance nowadays chloramphenicol ampicillin and cotrimoxazole is not used so how do you prevent from enteric fever first improve sanitation a good water good food living standard socio economical standard just improve it and reduce the incidence of typhoid <clears throat> and may we can give typhoid vaccine that's a iv2 and oral2 we already discussed about enteric fever typhoid fever how does it cause what is the causative organism for enteric fever what is the mode of transmission of enteric fever what is the most prominent clinical scenario of enteric fever how do you diagnose enteric fever how do you manage enteric fever and what is the pre prevention protocol for enteric fever so if you have any kind of question regarding enteric fever you may can write on comment box